Having trouble identifying your slags lately? Well, fear not. We're here with the slag master himself, Richie, the Renaissance man, Strammy, live from the Pocono Underground, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. we're gonna tackle slags in this video, so stay tuned. Slag master. <laughs> just gonna crack me up. We're gonna take it by company, right? Yep. Right, so there's basically there's four four suspects when it comes to slags, right? Yep. Acro, Pelt, Christensen, and Martin Frederick Christensen. Yes. So we're going to break it down. We're going to look at the Martin Frederick Christensen's first. And here is a small spread of MFCs. A couple bricks in here, and the rest are slags. Their signature pattern is the nine and tail. Yep. So these are hand gathered machine roll and they're really actually what do we have here this is a nine and tail but the color is yeah light blue sky light blue, blue. So, so doesn't fall into mfc right so this would be what christensen hand christensen agate mm, yes right. yep all right so that's going to go with our christensen's so because both christensen and MFC at one point or another were making hand gathered, right? Machine yep, yep. rolled, but you can pick it apart by their color yep. palette. Yeah. So with MFC, they only really produce this green, this amber, which is pretty much their most common, the cobalt blues, purples, and then white, which I don't, I'm not showing any whites here, but. Really, it's just those five colors. Yep, and no red besides what you see in a brick. Right. So that's the cool. That's one. the only red they use is their their brick. Brick red, right? So. Hey, were you playing with marbles before? He was. Here's some Christiansons, same pattern, mm -hmm. different color. Nine and tails. Yep. Yeah, and then it's all color palette, right? Because like we weeded out the one. Yeah. Light sky blue. Sky thing, blue. Great nine and tails. But knowing the color palette that there wouldn't be a sky blue, nor would there be any kind of yep, bright yellow. yellows. Yeah. Yeah. But let's, yeah. Let's put these side by side, right? Yeah. So not only can you tell the color difference, but when you hear nine and tail, you can see how the nine starts and then tail really comes that's that whole tail cutting down yeah, cutting down is. all the Here way around comes. so really super dramatic whatever while a straight christensen hand gathered you have that same nine but as you follow around instead of a tail it's just like later marbles we'll see like a seam okay like a cut off seam at the bottom you don't see those super long dramatic tails okay. like swooping yeah. all around yeah, it's not as distinctive of a tail. Yep. If any, it just sort of gets covered under the seam. Yeah, it seems like snipped or tucked in. Yep. How do you explain this one, Rich? Yeah. It's going left-handed. Left it's going counterclockwise. Counter yep, I know that from handmaids, like left-hand twist onions, left-hand, so yeah. same uh, So left-handed. a lefty maker. Okay. Or, you know. Cool. I'm showing the Yasuda brand Japanese transitional slags here, as they would likely be the only other marbles that could be mistaken for MFC or Christensen hand-gathered type slags. The base glass on these are typically lighter in color, except for the deep cobalt blues. There's some unusual base colors with these, including a sea foam green and a bright pink champagne color. Many show a big circular donut hole shaped pole opposed by a pinch type panel pole or sometimes what appears to be a tail pattern. These slags are largely identifiable by their cold rolls and crease marks on the surface of the glass. These marbles typically don't show up in American lots but would be found more commonly in European and Canadian lots. Peltier slags, right? Yes. We got brown, blue, green, aqua, purple, red, and yellow. 
These are recognizable marbles, mm. right? Yeah, that feathering, the white with the feathering, what they call feathering, with just those little striations. Fine lines. Yeah, that are just... Yeah, real crisp, too. Yep. Yeah, these are just gorgeous marbles. Pretty collectible. People go for these if, because of their pretty patterns. And some of them, you actually see the feather. You know, actually see it. For sure, yeah. And very, like, also comparatively, like, the, the pattern is pretty consistent compared to other, you know what I mean? For one style slag that always has a feathering, like, they're always That's things, right. like, consistent with, like, you don't find so many weak or strong. Like, I always think it looks like a water ripple. Like, that yeah. same kind of, you yeah. know, and then super bright white. Super, super hard find 11 sixteenths. Like, if you oh. notice, most of the ones you find are 5 eighths or smaller, but 11 yeah. sixteenths way harder. Very distinctive marble, not hard to pick out of a lineup. Yep, yep. And that's Peltier's Feather Slags. Wow. We're looking at Christensen Agates now. Christensen Agates Slags. The hardest to find? Yeah. Uh, the slags? I or? Mean, the variety. The thing oh, that okay. I think you discovered in uh, preparing for this video a little bit is just uh, the variety um, of both structure, pattern, and color within Christensen that seems to just have a way more broad spread than in right. other companies. So okay. first one we'll revisit again is like the hand gathered CA. Right? Okay, yeah. Which um one thing before we start getting into all the colors, kinda okay. neat you always hear about Christensen being in Cambridge, Ohio and at first having um the original plant in Payne. Right. So as of a few years ago, um these were discovered this and one other shade that I don't have an example of. Every marble, there were jars of these found, I guess, and they were the first marbles to be solidly attributed to pain. And every marble in the jar was a slag, either in this shade or a little more like oil slicky, um, tannish base or amber base. Uh -huh. um, but the telltale thing is every single marble in those jars that were found were all hand gathered. Again, a reminder, um, that these won't have tails like MFs. That's like our big tell that it's a Christensen hand gathered rather than a MFC, uh, M M MFC nine with nine tail. and tail. Because right. otherwise from the top, you see a lot of really similar nines. Yeah, we can uh, attribute that to Christensen. Yup. It's, it's a gorgeous and orange. Yup, and that's actually a little anomaly in slag. Because if you look, like you have the white, but you also have this like electric... Kind of like the electric yellow that you'd see in um, in other Christensen marbles show through. So technically, like that's even a little more than just a slag because you also have that yellow going on. Oh, but I those see. were boxed um, in CA box slags, both a clear base with an electric orange, and then these kind of orange base with that extra yellow plus that white. Back with the Renaissance man, we're looking at single seams, right? Is yeah, one seam on a Christensen. Yep, totally. Basics you could see on every slag on this table, white and just one other transparent color. Yeah. And a distinct single seam. So like in this cadmium electric yellow, right? Yeah. So there's one yeah. seam, and as we turn the marble. Keeps all that so it gets that whirlwind of color that's going around and going to connect all right back to that same scene. So you get really dramatic, like whooshes of color and waves getting stretched oh. around. Same thing, this the big peach. Yeah, that's the right? peach colored slag. There's our unique to Christensen, right? The color. Yeah, and I think just a I don't a couple others know here. If it's intentional or not? Yep. Let's get them out, right? Yeah, that's a little orangey. Yep. This one. That's yep. a hard to find and another color. in CAC, especially it'll go like range from a dark brown to like the light peach or a light amber, like this kind of. Yeah, there's a lot dealing. of, yeah, that's, that's three different variations of peach there. So there's, there's brown, there's yellow, right? So we have yeah. the electric yellow, transparent red, classic red slag. And um, the kind of neat thing to bring up now is in something that's confusing about CAC slags, pattern. How much external white do you have? Because you know a slag is always white and one other transparent color, right? Okay. So if you have external color, easier to identify. Yeah. Right? Because you could say, you know, here's your white, there's your yellow base, so you know it's a slag. But when you move along 
same yellow, but with the absence of a white. lot of internal white. Yeah, you just oh, man. you just see a little bit of white get to the surface. Okay. You still see your your single seam. You could find it, but it's almost like compare it. That seems under the surface, kind of stuck in. This one's right on the top. But same kind of thing with the pattern. If you can identify where the seam is, you swoop the color, and if it's one seam, it does those big kind of wavy loops all the way around to that okay. starting and ending point. Here's a, another variant of uh, amber, like a light amber. And you won't find that pattern on a two seam. Now, internal versus external, look at this little, little single seam red that has all internal oh, yeah, lines throughout around. it. Yep, so like you can almost see, so when you talk about Christians and Cyclones, you know, okay. you refer to like an offshoot of a guinea where you have different colors or guinea colors swirling around inside the marble. Right. Um, or just straight Twisting. Cyclone. Yep, yep. Yeah. Same thing in a slag. That's slag. why to me is like the slag is your most valuable marble in your CA collection because you could see inside and see the patterns that come up in like the super exotic marbles. Uh -huh. Like this little guy does the opposite of internal, but almost same thing where you could see like the more Cobra style where it's just a swoop oh, of white man. coming up and making a little snake. Yeah. In great examples, you'll almost see like the snake with the tongue. Like it looks wow. really, you know, in a great like okay. Christensen uh, Cobra. Single seam slag would be the the least common to find of the seams okay. because you have to think, again, single stream glass somebody's taking it out, somebody's cutting it. So that first cut is the single seam. The rest of the cuts along the way are gonna be double seam till you get to that last little glob of glass on there. Oh, that. right. So there's always gonna be just it's like- It's just the first and the last on a cane. Check out how little white or little of anything this slag has on it. You can almost, until you look at it, tough to just even find that it's a single seam. Jimmy, oh, good shot. Look at that. Here you go, Jimmy. Playing knock hockey. So here, these are two seams. So now we're on, yep, yep, yeah. onto two seam CA slag. So of Christensen slag types, two seam would be the most prevalent because most of the marbles that would have been made on that, you know, run would be two seam, except the first right. and the last. You're cutting the, the drop yep. as it as it's streaming out. You're just cutting, 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 yep. Yep. cutting. Yep. It's dropping. You got two seams. Or like these are actually a dark purple. Right, so they'll backlight like a really dark, rich purple. Okay. But if you take a quick look, right, it looks sort of like a master brush patch. Right, like yeah. you can tell it's a seam, but first glance you think, oh, it's, yeah. a, it's a, just a, a brushed kind of patch. So one of those, this is just a little more dynamic example of the same marble, but wouldn't get as confused. Right, you know? so check your masters. Yep, yep, <laughs> for sure. Chrissy's in there. But like this one has a little less, it's a little less dense inside. So you can kind of see, right? Right? Yeah, you like, can. So you can totally, these not so much, like you need a really strong, it just looks right, black. Like a back of an iPhone light. But it's, yeah, it's a really deep yeah. purple. Like this um, cobalt blue is an easy slip through because again, if we look at like the pattern of how the white was distributed, it's all subsurface. So you don't have any of that initial indicator of like, this is slag because there's white. But you can't you go, see the right. Right, you can't see what's going on because the white's inside. Yeah, right. that's a regular two seamer, not quite oh, a wow. peewee, but just CAC also has the uh, oh the uranium think... glass. Like they do light right. up. Classic two seam, right? Seam on that side. Yeah. Seam on the other, you get the straight, right? But sometimes you get these weird little oddities like side by side two cuts like on that little orange oh wow so that just right? wraps all the way around and the yeah two cuts almost are pressed it's like almost yep. like pinched right? and almost like same effect of like the single seam because they're so close to one another that you get that same wrap kind of feel to it yeah here's another like um a little peach that would slip through because it yeah. just looks softer and you don't quite away think those are seams or cut lines you just think oh it's a patch Right, you, you know, yeah, it makes you want to check your Jabos. Yep. All right, so those yeah, are two ahead. seams. Yeah. Those are great side by side examples too. It's like the stripes are so heavy duty. Eleven sixteenths there. Oh, bigger. These are oh, okay. pushing. Three I think quarter. three quarter. Yep. And what size? How small are we getting on some? Peewee. 
Okay. That's PV under uh, 0 0.5. There's... Some of them look a little like these Germans. I, I got a couple here just to show them real quick. Yep. Pre-World War II German slags can look especially similar to the one-seam diaper fold style and the two-seam style Christiansen's. This sampling of close to 200 German slags is from the Ron Buhl collection out of Switzerland. And it gives us a good general idea of the patterns and colors produced. The striping here is usually very stark, bright white and straight and close to the surface. There's often, but not always, an open gap at the seams where the striping work stops short and shows kind of an open window into the marble. Lots of color variations here, including peaches, apricots, and sort of like a watermelon color. These marbles aren't quite as refined as Christensen's, some showing crease marks and sort of grooves at the surface. They're not normally found in random lots in the States, and were probably never distributed in great numbers there. And not even deep into the shadows of the Pocono underground. Three-seam spec on Christmas. Yeah, which I heard, I don't know if true or not, but that it was a um, something that happened when the marble dropped to the roller, that like this third seam, it wasn't like a third cut. It wasn't, it was just like the way the marble folded when it was cut a certain way going through the rollers. Not sure. Right, because you got two cuts from scissors and somehow yep. it's coming after yep. that. And it seems like, it's yeah. Gotta, it's gotta be happening on the rollers. There's yep. no other place for it to happen. First seam there. Then, right next to it, that's sort of like I see it. Little second, and then same thing as any other. We go around the marble. There's the third. Oh wow! Right up against them, really. Huh? Right, yeah, almost clustered around one third of the marble. Same type thing, like two cuts side by side. Yeah. Which I think one of those is that that fold or that effect. a little wobble there. Yep. And there's our like the third is is right there right and the whole rest of the side of the marble is just stretching all the way around yep just like same effect as that single single yeah. seam big okay. seam like the a seam where it's one seam two seam you know half or three okay. quarters way around and then one going opposite oh like uh yeah. yeah and i i don't know what the cause of that or if, to the yep. other two these are electric greens right here yeah and definitely a tougher this is like one of those um you know one end of the spectrum of a christensen green definitely falls into the electric category yeah they're badass and so this is just a big load of these are acro slags and it's hard to really make blanket statements on the patterns we determined that the over-under for finding Acro Agate brand slags in a big pile of slags is 80% or more, as Acro was the longest running and therefore the most abundant of the slag making company marbles. Their patterns are very typical of what you would expect to see in antique slag glassware. Unlike West Virginia swirls, these marbles are made from single stream slag glass material with plenty of random marbling, swirling, sometimes very busy, sometimes very sparse, and usually uninterrupted lines. You can usually find cut lines, but they aren't necessarily company specific or distinctive. Sometimes they're standout blobby type shapes, but for the most part, the swirls are non-specific with the white glass traveling on and under the marble surface. Acro used a wide variety of slag base colors, including a fabulous aqua, a hard-to-find orange, and the UV reactive uranium glass. For collectors sorting their slag marbles at home, the slag master and I suggest that if your marble doesn't fit the criteria of the other slag marble types shown earlier in this video, and looks a lot like what we're showing here now, 
the chances are highly likely that you are indeed looking at an acro agate slag. Yeah, we're just looking here, have like the, the real so, cobalt blue, a little, yeah, you know, variation, a little lighter. Different hues of blue. Yeah, and then that real like, like this versus like the sky blue versus even yeah, hair, yeah. even lighter blue. Yeah, yeah, a couple of different shades of blue. And green too. Yep. They had a couple there. There's a darker forest green, Kelly green, a lighter green, and this is sort of a, and that's a nice looking green. This is more like a celery, kind of, I always call it like a yep. celery, like a mossy green. Yeah. Well, Richie, thank right you on. so much for knocking out the slags with us. Right on. Thank you. Appreciate it. Excellent. Here at the Pocono Underground. Where's the cat? <laughs>